Today we're going to be talking about the power of Bluetooth proxies with Home Assistant, in particular with this device. We're not talking about ESP Home as a whole, we're specifically going to be talking about Bluetooth proxies and using them with Ethernet based ESP32 devices. Bluetooth Low Energy is used by so many devices these days, so let's take a look at Bluetooth proxies in more detail. Often the challenge with smart homes is communication and wires, and that's why battery powered wireless devices are often great because they're usually very small and can be placed anywhere. But when planning your backbone infrastructure, I highly recommend wiring these devices in instead. And this is because it'll help make your end client devices that are wireless more reliable. In case you don't know what Bluetooth proxies are, they're typically ESP32 devices running ESP Home, which can communicate with nearby Bluetooth devices. They can gather data from passive devices such as iBeacons, but they can also pair with Bluetooth devices as well. As the name suggests, Bluetooth proxies act as proxies, and therefore I consider them as infrastructure devices rather than end devices. And for this reason, you want them to be reliable, because if they fail, then it's not just them that fail, it's also all of the end devices that depend on it that will fail as well. So a good way of doing this is to have them wired rather than wireless. Having said that, Home Assistant will know when a Bluetooth proxy is unavailable, and so if it can't connect to an end client device, then it will try a different Bluetooth proxy instead if it's available. Here I have a couple of ESP32 devices which have got Ethernet ports on them and here I've got a couple that haven't. We're going to look at this one specifically today which is the ESTPOE32. This is the WT32 ETH01 and then we've got a Node MCU here and a D1 Mini here. The reason I'm going to focus on this device today is because it's PoE capable, which means that I can power it over Ethernet rather than having to have a separate power source to power it. Before we dive into the specs of this board, which I do want to do, I just want to talk about why I want to use this in my smart home. I've got a SwitchBot smart lock on the front door, and as you can imagine, I want it to be quite reliable. Thankfully, it works with Bluetooth proxies, and so this is why I want to have an Ethernet-based Bluetooth proxy installed. No matter how good your Wi-Fi network is, you're always going to get some intermittent connection issues, whether that's due to Wi-Fi congestion from neighbouring Wi-Fi access points, or whether it's a smartphone hogging all the bandwidth, or maybe it's just the fact that the ESP32 device has to share its airtime between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi communication. It can't do both at the same time. And so having a couple of Ethernet based Bluetooth proxies is always a good idea. Now looking at the EST device, the first thing that's immediately obvious is that it's a lot larger than the other devices. This isn't a problem for me, but it's worth thinking about if you're thinking of including it in an enclosure. Part of this is that it's just simply been given some breathing room for the different components, and part of this is that it's got the different power options all at the same end, which I really like, because I get quite frustrated when you've got to wire things from both ends. It's a bit of a cable management nightmare. Whereas here you've got a USB-C connection, you've got the Ethernet PoE, and then you've also got some terminal blocks here where you can power it between 9 and 28 volts DC. One thing to note though is that the power sources aren't isolated from each other. This is noted on the website but I feel it's a little bit small and should be more visible. This means that for example if you're flashing the device with USB then make sure you haven't got it plugged in via Ethernet as well if it's a PoE connection. Now let's talk about a really simple but clever design feature and that is that we've got a cutout of the PCB here to allow the antenna to communicate with devices a bit easier. It just means that the signal won't have to go through the PCB first. And of course, being a development board, it's got breakout headers as well. I also like that they're female rather than male because it means there's less chance of shorting things out, unlike with this one and this one, for example. This video is not really supposed to be a review about this board, but I just thought I'd mention these few things. And a final thing to mention is that this board is created by YouTuber Lewis, who does the Everything Smart Home channel. So nice job. Installing ESP Home Bluetooth proxy onto this device is just like installing ESP Home onto any other ESP32 device really. Just bear in mind that it has got a flashing button so that when you flash the software you will need to hold this down when you give power to the board. An example YAML config file has been provided. There's a link on the product page which will link through to GitHub. You could update this config to have static IP address instead of DHCP and you might want to change a few other things as well which I'll go through a bit later in the video. The device has the common CH340 USB to serial chip on board, so if you've flashed ESP devices before then you shouldn't have a problem and shouldn't need to install any new drivers. 
Now it's just a case of plugging it into your chosen power source and plugging in an ethernet cable. If you use PoE, it's worth noting that it's only class one PoE, which means it's limited to around about 3.84 watts, I think it is, which I think is a bit of a shame because PoE can cater for a lot more than that, but this should be totally fine for most peripherals that you're going to be connecting to this. Once you have the device up and running the ESP home, you should start to see Bluetooth devices being automatically discovered in the integration section of Home Assistant. In my setup, you can see it wants me to install the iBeacon tracker integration, and I would really like to install this, but unfortunately it doesn't have many configuration options, so you can't restrict the devices that it finds. So I don't really fancy having 50 entities that I don't really need to use. Instead, I use a custom solution for presence detection, and I might do a video on this at some point in the future. The other thing that's been detected is a temperature and humidity sensor which is in the cabinet behind me and the final one is actually my next door neighbor's Christmas lights. If possible, I recommend having a Bluetooth proxy around about a maximum of five meters from an end device. Now this might seem that you need quite a lot, especially if you've got a big house, but really actually 10 meters diameter in all three dimensions is not too bad. And if you've got something like the generation two Shelly devices, they can also act as Bluetooth proxies as well. Of course, these are Wi-Fi, so they're not going to be as reliable as hardwired ones. Also bear in mind, if you're depending on something like Shelly devices as Bluetooth proxies, then they're probably going to be in a light fitting or in a wall socket, which means they're going to have less range. Now before we wrap up, let's take a look at how we're actually going to install ESP Home Bluetooth proxy onto one of these devices. We want to go to the ESP Home add-on and then press new device and now give it a name and then press next. We now want to do skip this step because we're not going to set it up yet. And now we want to select the device type. In this case, it's the ESP32. And now we want to press skip again. And now we've got the device showing here. We now want to press edit so that we can edit the YAML file. I recommend taking a copy of the API and OTA sections because they've got some authentication details in, which are a good idea to include in the final YAML config. We now want to go to the GitHub and copy the sample config and paste it into ESP Home. We can now overwrite the API and OTA sections that we just saved. I'm also going to add some scan parameters so that the scanning for the Bluetooth devices is all of the time. I only do this for ethernet based proxies though, otherwise there'll be no time for the Wi-Fi to communicate. And this is what the final config looks like. So you can see at the bottom, we've got the Bluetooth proxy information, and we also need this as well to enable Bluetooth. We've then got the ethernet section, and you can see that the Wi-Fi section is commented out because we can't have Wi-Fi and ethernet working at the same time. We now just need to press save, and then exit out of this, go to the three dots, and then we want to go to install to install it onto the device. We now want to select the serial port that our device is connected on. For this device to be successfully flashed, we actually need to get it into bootloader mode. So you need to hold down the flash button on the device and then press reset and then release. If you haven't got it in bootloader mode successfully, then you'll get this error message. If you're struggling to get it into pairing mode, then instead hold down the flash button and then plug in the power via USB instead. It just takes a couple of minutes to install the ESP home firmware onto the device, and then you should be good to go and plug in an ethernet cable. It says it's been successfully installed. As you can see here, it's showing us online. All being well, you've now got at least one of these Bluetooth proxies in your home network. Comment down below if you use Bluetooth proxies already, or if you're going to consider using them watching this video. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and liking the video if you enjoyed it. So thanks, until next time.